I I got half an hour before I have to get ready for work. Connie's hosting a talent contest to find the best characters in the Dreamiverse. But she's a no-nonsense judge and none of these candidates are up to scratch. Looks like a human Mr. Potato. And here she goes. Of course, one. Cuthbert's no use. So let's see if we can come up with something to impress her. Head into the dressing room, also known as edit mode, to get started. Mm -hmm. In this tutorial, we'll be customizing the appearance of a puppet. So we'll need a blank canvas to start. Mm -hmm. Go to the assembly menu and open the gadgets menu. Now open the gameplay gear menu. In here, find the blank puppet deluxe. The deluxe version is the perfect starting point for making characters. Select it with X and a blue mannequin will appear on your imp. It has built-in features like jump and possession animations, which the basic version doesn't have. Connie won't be impressed by a basic puppet, so make sure you select the right one. Stamp the deluxe puppet in the scene with R2 or X. Get its feet roughly on the floor, but make sure they aren't intersecting with it. Then press the circle button to unequip the puppet from your imp. If you need to, you can grab and adjust the puppet with R2. Yep. In the next step, we'll start exploring the puppet's inner workings. The puppet might look simple, but it's quite a complex gadget. So let's get to know it a little better. It's made up of many objects that have been grouped together. And just like any other group, it can be scoped into. Huh? Hover over the puppet with your imp, press and hold L1, and then press L1. X to scope in. Below the puppet, you will now see its base and its logic microchip. If they're obscured by the floor, you may need to scope no. out and adjust your puppet's position. The puppet's body is made of sculptures, joined together with connectors. Sculptors. When scoped in, we can grab parts of the puppet to change its pose. Before we do that, find the button called Puppet Mirror in the context menu. Uh. Select this button with X, oh, and your puppet will stay symmetrical when you pose it. Of course, you don't have to make it symmetrical, but it's a good way to start. You can always add nuance <laughs> later. When you move a part of the puppet, all the parts connected to it will also move. I see. The root of the puppet is the pelvis, and every other part is connected in a hierarchy from there. For example, moving the upper arm will move the lower arm and the hand as well. Mm -hmm. But if you move the pelvis, the whole puppet will move. Its feet will try to stay in contact with the floor. So if you lower the pelvis, the puppet's knees will bend. I like that. You can also yeah, rotate yeah. parts by grabbing them with L2. Use R2 and L2 to create a new pose for the puppet. Changing the pose can be a great starting point for a character. The pose could be confident, sad, scared, or aggressive. 
Don't forget, you can undo any changes with the left directional button if you make a mistake. Use the grab cam to adjust your pose from different angles. Just hold R1 over the puppet to activate it. When you've finished posing your puppet, move on to the next step. Now we've posed our puppet, we can start adjusting its proportions. To do that, we're going to use the stretch tool. Go to the assembly menu, then open the tools menu. Select the stretch tool. It's the one that looks like a double-ended arrow. The stretch tool works feet. like the move tool in a lot of ways. <clears throat> but with the stretch tool, you can move part. Select the stretch tool. It's the one that looks like a double-ended arrow. The stretch tool works like. Select the stretch. Go to the assembly menu, then open the tools menu. Select the stretch tool. It's the one that looks like a double-ended arrow. The stretch tool works like the move tool in a lot of ways. But with the stretch tool, you can move parts of the puppet beyond the limits of the connectors. I've Try grabbing and moving the puppet's are. head. Notice the way the neck elongates and shortens. Now try it on the hands. This changes the length of the upper and lower arm. Sorry, I missed it again. Go to the assembly menu, then open the tools menu. Oh. Select the stretch tool. It's the one that looks like a double-ended arrow. The stretch tool works like the move tool in a lot of ways. But with the stretch tool, you can move parts of the puppet beyond the limits of the connectors. Try grabbing and moving the puppet's head. Notice the way the neck elongates and shortens. Now try it on the hands. This changes the length of the upper and lower arm. Some body parts respond differently to the stretch tool. For instance, if you move the upper arms, the shoulders will broaden and the chest will expand. Oh, oh! How the... You can also scale parts of the puppet using the up and down directional buttons. I'd only recommend doing this to the puppet's extremities, though. The head, hands and feet. Puppets are delicate contraptions and extreme scaling and stretching can make them behave unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. I know but if anything does go skew with, just undo it using the left directional button. If you know how to use sculpt mode, you could try scoping into the individual body parts to change oh, their shit. shape. No, no, don't. You can find a whole sculpt tutorial mode. on sculpting in the art tutorials. Have a play around with stretching and scaling and see what you can create. Try making the puppet more cartoony or turn it into a monster. Test out your puppet in play mode to see it in motion. <laughs> Bye. When you're done, return to edit mode. Rewind time with L3 to get your puppet back in position. In the next step, I'll show you how to color and stylize your puppet. Another way of customizing your puppet's appearance Damn, is by changing its jet. color. We can do this by tinting it in coat mode. If you've played my tutorial on coat, style and effects, you'll already know how to do this. In the assembly menu, oh, go to mode. the modes menu and enter coat mode. In the coat mode menu, open the colors menu 
and select a color for your puppet. Right. Now hover over your thing. puppet and hold R2 to tint it with your selected color. The longer you hold R2, the stronger the tint will become. If you want your puppet to be oh, multicolored, simply scope into the puppet. I don't want to select tint. a different color from the colors menu. Hover your imp over a part <gasps> of the puppet you want to tint. How about the head? Oh. Now, when you press and hold R2, just that part of the puppet will be tinted. You can also use the tools in style mode and effects mode. Try using style mode to change the texture of your puppet. If you don't know how to use style mode, there's an art tutorial which can help you. In the next step, we'll dive into the dressing up box. Oh. Oh. He is a god. One of the simplest ways to customize a puppet is by adding accessories. But to make sure they move with the puppet, we need to group them with a body part. Before we do that, it's important to fully understand the concept of scoping in and out of groups and objects. If you've played part four of the Start Dreaming tutorials, then you'll already know a thing or two about using groups. Objects in dreams are often combined into groups, which can be treated like a single object in assembly mode. Groups themselves can also be grouped. This means that you can have groups nested inside other groups. Let's try scoping in and out of something else before we invade the puppet's personal space. <laughs> Over there on the floor is a hat box. Make sure you're in edit mode. Now try taking the lid off the hat box. The whole box will move because uh -huh. the lid, the box and its contents have been grouped. Undo the move with the left directional button to put it back in its place. Now scope into the you group. Troll. Hover over the hat box, press and hold L1 and press X. Everything but the box should go gray and blurry. If not, Sorry, make sure your visual here. feedback preference is set to all. This shows that you've scoped into the group and can edit its huh. contents. Now, you should be able to take the lid off the hat box. Inside is another hat box. Yes, Try taking the lid off this one. I think you can guess what will happen. <laughs> this smaller hat box is also grouped with its lid and contents. Remove the smaller box and place it next to the large Yo. one. Now scope into this group by holding L1 and pressing X over the smaller hat box. The original hat box will go gray and blurry as we've scoped into a subgroup. Now you should be able to open the smaller hat box. What's inside? A lovely hat. Take it out and place it next to the smaller box. When you've done that, proceed to the next step. Now that we've taken the hat out of the box, let's try putting it on our puppet. First, we need to scope out of this group. To do that, simply hold L1 and press circle. That takes us back into the large hat box group. Now scope out again into the main scene by holding L1 and pressing circle. Pick up the hat. Ah, we seem to have a bit of a problem here. The hat is still inside the nested groups, even though it's outside the hat box. When you scope in and out, only you and your imp are moving in and out of objects or groups. Unless you're carrying something with you.
scope back into the large hat box group and then into the smaller hat box group to get the hat. Now grab and hold the hat with R2 and scope out of both groups with L1 and circle while holding the hat. If you've done it correctly, you should be back in the main scene with a hat you can now move independently of the boxes. That's because oh, scoping I in hear. and out of a group whilst holding an object adds or removes it from that group. Hurrah! Now we can put it on the puppet. Grab the hat, hover the over thing. the puppet, then hold L1 and press X to scope into the puppet with the hat. Now scope into the puppet's head while still holding the hat. This is a shortcut for grouping two objects if you're already grabbing one of them. Simply grab an object and scope into another object to group them automatically without having to select them. The same way that scoping into a group while holding an object adds it to the group. Now that it's in a group with the head, place the hat where you want it. Remember to check it from different angles using the grab cam to make sure it's in position. Press R2 softly to nudge if you need to make fine adjustments to the position of the hat. Before you move on, you should try out the puppet to see it walk around with its That's new exactly accessory. What I was... Oh, what happened? Switch he fell. He died. Possess it with R2 and take it for a wonder. Nice. Why has this happened? When you're ready to continue, go back to edit mode. Uh. Going to play mode and back to edit mode will scope you out of any groups. Yo. Remember to rewind time with L3 to get your puppet back in position. Then go to the next Where step. Where did he go? Oh my. Things have... Oh my. Nice step. Okay. Let's add some more accessories before our puppet's stage debut. Open the assembly menu and select search, the button with the magnifying glass, to search for an element. Usually, you'd be in the Dreamiverse here, but for this tutorial, I've kept things simple and curated a collection of elements for you to use. Take a look at some of the accessories in the collection. Select one you like with X, scope into the puppet and select search, the button with the magnifying glass, to search for an element. Usually, you'd be in the Dreamiverse here, but for this tutorial, I've kept things simple and curated a collection of elements for you to use. Take a look at some of the accessories in the collection. Select one you like with X. You'll now have your chosen accessory on your imp. Don't stamp it down yet, though. First, we need to scope into the puppet. You can do this even when you have an element from the Dreamiverse on your imp. Scope in with L1 and X, and then scope into the body part that you want to attach it to. Hmm. If that body part is already in its own group, you'll enter that group. But if the body part is just a sculpture, then you'll create a new group when you stamp the object down. Once the accessory is in the group, you can adjust the accessory while you're there. Try adding some more accessories from the collection. Oh, that's oh, way off. Then it's important to test the puppet in play mode to check that the accessory is attached correctly. Here's another very important tip. If you ever want to remove an accessory, whatever you do, Ooh. don't ungroup the body part. How'd you get back? 
If you do that, you'll delete that group's connection to the puppet. And without the connector, your puppet's limbs will start falling off when you go into play mode. And nobody wants that. Wait, wait, wait. Sorry, can you repeat that? Instead, no. whatever you do. Here's another very important tip. If you ever want to remove an accessory, whatever you do, don't ungroup the body part. If you do that, you'll delete that group's connection to the puppet. And without the connector, your puppet's limbs will start falling off when you go into play mode. And nobody wants that. Instead, scope into the group containing the body part and the accessory. Then either delete the accessory or grab it and scope out. If there's only one object left in the group, it'll automatically ungroup, and the connector will remain safely connected to the remaining object. Play around with the things you've learned in this tutorial and have fun making a character. When you're happy, select the star podium from the tutorial collection and stamp it down in the outline that we've put in the scene for you. Then head back into play mode, jump onto the podium and see what Connie thinks of your creation. Well, I think I've got shit to do, but I am definitely going to try this later. watching. 